welcome to another episode of Untold Legends, where we explore the stories found within the worlds of video games, movies, comic books, and anything in between. Last time in the Mortal Kombat lore series, we experienced the story of Nightwolf, Mortal Kombat's Native American shaman warrior, his origins, his incredible importance to the overall story, his sacrifice against Sindel and transformation into a Netherrealm Revenant, and finally, his non-canon appearance in the events of Mortal Kombat 11. Today we're taking a sharp dive into the story of the purple-clad Melina, savage evil sister slash clone of the Edenian Princess Katana, equipped with ferociously good looks and the mouth of a monster. Sweet sister. My blood made you. That is all. Perhaps you will share a bit more. The character of Melina has become incredibly popular among the fan base, including myself, becoming my main fighter in Mortal Kombat 9 right next to the likes of Scorpion. She's one of the most unique looking characters in the series, and so popular in fact that whenever Ed Boon, co-creator of Mortal Kombat, tweets anything, there's a 100% chance of him being bombarded with replies asking for Melina in Mortal Kombat 11. Seriously, just look it up on Twitter and scroll through his replies, it's quite hilarious. And if you were around in the early 90s, you'll surely remember all the new Nudality codes kids were spreading on the playground that would allow you to play as naked Melina, as well as codes involving a Melina like character named Emerald. Total fabrications that we all attempted to figure out. She's appeared all over the place too. Outside of the video games, she had a very brief appearance in Mortal Kombat Annihilation as one of Shao Kahn's warriors. She just kind of appeared out of nowhere, she fought Sonya, died, and then we never see her again. And Sonya confuses her with Katana, although this version of the character doesn't really resemble her at all. Katana? You wish. In the Mortal Kombat Conquest live action series, she appeared in one episode in which she was actually some outworld warrior with a spell cast over her to make her look like Katana. And the Mortal Kombat Legacy web series actually had a really cool depiction of her character growing up alongside Katana. And her physical appearance had an influence on her face in Mortal Kombat X. And she also appears as a boss character in the Shaolin Monk spin-off. In the main video game universe, she was the first evil female character to appear and made her debut in Mortal Kombat 2 played by Catalin Zamiar, and later in Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 by Becky Gable. Melina. And she was created for a very simple purpose. They needed another palette swap character to fill in the roster, preferably female. Midway wanted Mortal Kombat 2 to compete against Street Fighter 2, which only had one female character at the time, Chun-Li. Now, alongside a girl wearing blue, there was also a girl wearing purple. Both developed with the idea of being masked sisters. One good, one evil. One beautiful, one ugly. A pair that Ed Boon has described as the female versions of Scorpion and Sub-Zero. Two rival characters with a shared history. But Melina had her own fighting style and personality. Instead of Katana's deadly fans, she was given size and a row of sharp teeth hidden by her mask. But what's Melina's backstory? How did Katana get a twin sister with a monster mouth? It begins all the way back with Shao Kahn's reign of terror. After he was firmly established as the Emperor of Outworld and began merging other realms after invading them, Shao Kahn took over Katana's realm of Edenia and became its new ruler. He murdered her father, King Jared, and forced her mother Sindel to become his queen. Unable to bear her new role, Sindel ended her own life, and Katana was left alone with Shao Kahn. He decided to keep Katana alive and adopt her as his new daughter. And using his dark magic, he wiped away her memory. With new memories implanted instead, she believed Shao Kahn was her father, and he turned her into one of his deadliest assassins. But one thing he couldn't force was Katana's love. After the sorcerer Shang Tsung came into Khan's service, he ordered him to create a clone of Katana loyal to him. And Shang Tsung used his magic to combine Katana's essence with the essence of the Outworld's Tarkatan race. The result was Melina, a copy of her sister that was hiding Tarkatan features and untapped aggression. The girls grew up unaware of their true origins and saw each other as sisters. Shao Kahn also trained Melina to be his assassin, but he couldn't love her. He saw her as an imperfect, cheap copy of Katana. So both girls began training training with each other in brutal matches to see who would come out on top. As their skills grew, they were sent on missions and killed targets opposed to Shao Kahn's will without mercy and with incredible efficiency. But as she grew older, Melina began discovering that she was different when her Tarkatan teeth started coming in and bouts of rage were becoming more common. The cat 
Eventually, Katana's memories of a once free Denia and her actual parents began resurfacing, and she confronted Shao Kahn. He refused to allow Katana to turn against him, and he attacked her burning away her memories for a second time. But unknown to him, Melina was hiding in the shadows and overheard the entire conversation. Her life was a lie. Her father had no love for her, and she was simply a cheap duplicate of her sister. Learning the truth made Melina hate Katana, and she worked harder than ever to gain Shao Kahn's admiration. During the events of Mortal Kombat 2, Earthrealm's warriors were fighting for the fate of their realm in the Outworld and challenged Shao Kahn directly in combat. Kahn was growing more and more suspicious of Katana, and she was seen speaking directly to Earthrealm warriors. She had begun regaining her memories again and was quietly feeding information to the Earthrealm fighters in order to turn against her father. This would be Melina's chance to impress him and prove herself as his true daughter. Shao Kahn ordered her to spy on Katana. When Melina caught her conspiring against him, she entered into a frenzy and attacked her. In Melina's non-canon Mortal Kombat 2 ending, Melina sees Katana's betrayal as an opportunity to take power for herself and turns on Shao Kahn. She kills him and takes Baraka as her king to rule over Outworld. In the canon version of events, Melina is killed during her confrontation with Katana. Katana wins. Fatality. Her soul was thrown into the Nether Realm, where she was doomed to spend eternity, and her hatred for her sister festered even stronger. In the Nether Realm, she met the Elder God of Death, Shinnok, who was planning his return and pledged her allegiance to him in exchange for being returned to the world of the living. When Melina found herself alive again, Khan had begun his invasion of Earth Realm. During the events of Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 and Trilogy, Melina's original loyalty to Shao Kahn was replaced by her fear of Shinnok. She had to obey him and plan to help overthrow her father, and she also discovered she now had the ability to read Katana's mind, a power she used to operate in secret. In her non-canon Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 ending, Melina gains the help of Baraka to take the revived Sindel and her daughter Katana hostage. They use them to force Shao Kahn to lure Earthrealm warriors into a fourth tournament, where Baraka could claim the title of Ultimate Mortal Kombat Champion. Additionally, in her non-canon Mortal Kombat trilogy ending, Melina destroys Shao Kahn and she allows Shinnok to step outside of the Netherrealm and take over. But in the canon version of events, Liu Kang defeated Shao Kahn in combat again, and sends him back into the Outworld, devoid of his immense power. After his defeat, Melina was summoned back to the Netherrealm by Shinnok alongside Noob Saibot to report back and help him prepare for his own invasion. With Shao Kahn out of the way, during the events of Mortal Kombat 4 and Gold, Shinnok returned from the depths of the Netherrealm and invaded the now freed realm of Edenia. He began attacking the rest of the realms with his demon army and combatants he had recruited, Melina among them, but she had no real loyalty to Shinnok. Melina simply feared him if she didn't do as he ordered, and she used the chaos of the invasion to fulfill her own plans. Katana had been captured and was being held prisoner, but Melina allowed her to escape. Melina was obsessed with avenging her own death at the hands of her sister and proved that she was the superior twin. Ultimately, Liu Kang was once again the hero and defeated Shinnok, sending him back into the Nether Realm. and in her non-canon Mortal Kombat Gold ending, Melina tracked down Katana and took her place as ruler of Edenia. Kitana, I want your status. I want to be Princess of Edenia. It is my right. You have no right. You are not my sister. You were born of Shang Tsung's sorcery for Shao Kahn. What right do you have to the throne of Edenia? No. No! You are evil and have no place in this world! You are right, Kitana. But if I have no right to this realm, then neither will you! You will die, sister! And I will take this realm for myself!
In the canon version of events, Melina was defeated by Katana in battle again, but this time Katana spared her life. She imprisoned Melina, seeing her as a victim of Shao Kahn, and hoped that she would one day be reformed. But the peace from Shinnok's defeat didn't last long. The evil sorcerers Quan Chi and Shang Tsung allied themselves together, and formed deadly alliance. And while they were distracting Earthrealm's warriors, the original ruler of Outworld, Onaga the Dragon King, used the body of Reptile to resurrect himself. Earthrealm's combatants battled against him, but most of them fell under his control, including Katana. Baraka and Tarkatan forces joined Onaga, and Baraka freed Melina from her prison. In return for saving her, Melina decided to join Onaga's ranks. With Katana out of the way for now, Melina covered her face and posed as her sister, ruling over Adenia's armies and manipulating battles to sway away from Onaga. During these battles, however, many Tarkatans were killed angering Baraka. Melina knew that Baraka was a threat since he knew her real identity and decided to meet with him. Baraka sensed a trap and sent a decoy in his place. Sure enough, Melina murdered the decoy by luring him to a beetle lair and fed him to a swarm of flesh-eating insects. While Onaga gathered strength, Melina began enjoying her newfound power and decided to take control of Shao Kahn's fortress for herself. For now, Melina had taken over Shao Kahn's role and crowned herself Empress of the Outworld, a rulership that wouldn't last long. She was ruling in the guise of Katana, but eventually a large portion of her armies became corrupted enough to serve her under a true identity. So Melina openly revealed her deception. But unknown to her, Shao Kahn had survived his last encounter with Liu Kang. He had regained much of his strength, and Shao Kahn attacked his fortress to take it back from her grasp. Melina locked herself in the throne room and ordered her mages to cast defensive spells, but Shao Kahn's brute force was too much. He came face to face with Melina, and she killed her own mages, attempting to protect her, and willingly relinquished Outworld's rule back to Shao Kahn. She surrendered and began working for him again, and during this time she was sent on multiple missions. One involving capturing the warrior Shujinko to use him as a bargaining tool for Onaga, the man who would ultimately defeat him, and she encountered the half-god Taven wandering inside Shao Kahn's fortress. This looks like Shao Kahn's dungeon. No sign of Quan Chi here. Quan Chi hasn't been down here in ages. I am Melina. Mmm, not bad. Care to dance? But having tasted power for just a while left Melina wanting more power. She no longer desired being a simple minion. During the events of Mortal Kombat Armageddon, all of reality was preparing to collapse on itself, and the combatants battled to claim the power of the reality-altering elemental called Blaze. Whoever defeated Blaze would have the power to save the universe and bestow any wish they pleased on themselves. Melina joined the forces of darkness led by a returned Shinnok. During the final battle nearing the top of the pyramid, she was sucker-punched by Earthrealm SWAT officer Curtis Stryker. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat Armageddon ending, Melina defeats Blaze and claims his power, using it to finally gain the upper hand on Katana. <laughs> Katana was horrified to find her mouth filled with elongated, razor-sharp teeth. The change in her appearance allowed Melina to pose as Katana and finally take her rightful place on the throne of Adenia. She imprisoned Katana, who went mad in the palace dungeon. In the canon version of events, she died on the steps of the pyramid at some point during the battle, and Shao Kahn succeeded in claiming the power. Before Shao Kahn could use his might to strike Raiden down, Raiden sent a message back in time and altered these future events, reverting himself to an altered timeline during the first Mortal Kombat. In this altered version of history, Katana and Melina weren't raised as sisters. Katana had grown up as Shao Kahn's sole adopted daughter, and as fate decreed, Liu Kang still won the first tournament and defeated Shang Tsung. During the second tournament located in Outworld, Katana 
Katana began doubting Shao Kahn and his lies, and Kahn grew to distrust Katana's loyalty to him. He had sent her on missions to kill the Earthrealm combatants, and she came back as a failure. Disappointed with Katana, he ordered Shang Tsung to create an improved clone of Katana that would be loyal to him. Shang Tsung went to work in his flesh pits, an area where he performed gruesome experiments to create warriors. He combined Katana's DNA and Tarkatan DNA, creating a fusion of two races, and Melina was born after several failures. Raiden attempted to turn Katana against her father and convinced her to investigate Shang Tsung's flesh pits, and inside the flesh pits, she saw the horrific creation that Shang Tsung had devised. Go to Shang Tsung's flesh pits. Much will be revealed there. The flesh pits? But I am forbidden to- Yes, you are. And why is that? I don't know. Tell me- You must discover your true path, alone. She looks like me. So pretty, so fair, so sad and alone. Come, let us be a family. You are not my family. You are a monstrosity. <laughs> Katana wins. That is no way to treat your sibling. Despicable swine. Do you think my father will stand for this? These abominations you have created here? I am merely perfecting you, princess. Though Melina had the appearance of a mature woman, she was part beast. Her Tarkatan DNA made her mind unstable, and she was prone to fits of madness and rage. She was a blank slate, completely programmed to butcher anyone to appease Shao Kahn. Katana was furious that Shang Tsung had created a monster in her image, and told Shao Kahn about his treachery. But to her surprise, Shao Kahn was pleased, and he sent Katana away to be scheduled for execution. His adopted daughter had betrayed him, and the loyal Melina would take her place. Jade set out to rescue Katana, but Katana urged urged her to go find help instead, and on her way to go find help, Jade encountered Melina for the first time. Others pursue, I find. By the gods, you are Melina. You must return with me. There's to be a celebration for my sister. She's going away. <laughs> Wins. I am more of a sister to Katana than you. Later, during the final battle of the tournament, Melina was seen standing alongside Shao Kahn, as Katana was held prisoner in chains. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat 9 ending, Melina slays Shao Kahn and discovered that she was a weapon to be used for Shang Tsung's benefit. Melina killed the Emperor in a fit of deranged fury, but she was unaware that her victory resulted from Shang Tsung's designs. He had imbued Melina with the ability to drain Shao Kahn's dark magic, rendering him vulnerable. Now Shang Tsung was ready to execute the next phase of his plan, murder Melina and take Shao Kahn's power for himself. 
But Melina instinctively wielded her new dark power against the sorcerer. Shang Tsung's end came quickly. Melina absorbed his soul, multiplying her strength. She then set out to claim an even bigger prize, the soul of a thunder god. In the canon version of events, Liu Kang is the one that defeated Shao Kahn, and Melina watched as he burst his fist through his chest. But Shao Kahn survived and began preparations to invade Earth Realm directly, and Melina was part of his inner circle serving him. Her first battle against one of Earth Realm's warriors was against SWAT officer Curtis Stryker. Stryker, check her out. What do you think, friend or foe? Foe. Dressed like that? Definitely foe. Cover me. Hey, what are you doing out here? <laughs> Looking for a new playmate. She was defeated by Stryker and helped the other generals bring in the body of Mataro. After being killed by Raiden, enraged with their failure, Shao Kahn killed Shang Tsung and transferred his soul power into the resurrected Sindel. He sent her to find and kill Earthrealm defenders, and Cabal was spying on the entire situation, and Melina would attempt to defend her father. No one attacks the Emperor! <laughs> And I thought I was a freak. Eventually, Sindel did kill most of Raiden's forces, and Raiden was successful in fending off Shao Kahn's invasion, sending Kahn to his punishment for ignoring the rules of Mortal Kombat. As in the original timeline, his defeat left the door open for Shinnok to return and escape the Netherrealm, and Shao Kahn's death left Outworld's rulership in question. Melina immediately took the throne as her own, claiming to be Shao Kahn's legitimate daughter and true heir. She became known in Outworld as a terror, worse than her father, the Mad Empress. Shao Kahn may have been a ruthless tyrant, but in some way, he brought order. Melina was pure chaos and only cared about retaining her own power, even forcing Khan's previous servants to bow at her feet and pledge loyalty. But dissent began forming in her ranks, and Kotal, an Ajtek warrior that acted as general to Khan, spoke out against her. He wanted to bring peace to Outworld and the endless, constant state of war the realm was in. When he confronted Melina, she became enraged for questioning her authority, and Reptile defended him. Kotal once saved Reptile's life, and the Zatarin pledged his loyalty to Kotal again. Molina. Eventually, Kotal was able to wrestle control away from her and took over as the new ruler of Outworld, Kotal Khan. Molina went into hiding and began forming a rebel force against him. She demanded to have her throne back and allied herself with several forces, such as the Red Dragon Clan, Rico, a brilliant warlord that was loyal to Shao Kahn, known for his unbeatable strategies in battle, and the Shokan Prince Goro, who was angry that his people were pushed aside in Kotal's Outworld. Rico had also seduced Molina, becoming her lover and closest advisor but he had plans of his own. During one of his conquests, he heard a voice that made him believe he was destined to be a god, and a cleric from the Chaos Realm named Havoc was manipulating Rico to collect all of the Kamidogu, daggers that used blood magic and were keys to keeping Shinnok sealed inside his amulet. Melina had no idea that Rico was simply using her, and she trusted him more than anybody else. But her rebellion was quickly falling apart. The Edenian half-god Rain, also manipulating her for his own purposes, had allied himself with her and participated in a battle against Kotal Khan, and Kotal used the power of the sun to fry him. Rain survived, heavily wounded, but Melina sat at his bedside as he recovered. Ermac appeared and informed Melina of more losses. Prince Goro challenged Kotal and was relieved of all four arms, leaving him filled with shame. Kotal had formed an alliance with Kano's Black Dragon Clan, and Kano activated a nuclear weapon that decimated Melina's Shokan forces. Melina demanded that Ermac and the Red Dragon be summoned, and suddenly Rain woke up and informed her of Rico's betrayal. Trail. He was loyal to another, someone named Havoc. Melina was determined to make Rico pay and ordered Ermac to gather Baraka and his Tarkatan hordes, and they all traveled to Shang Tsung's island where Rico was located with the Red 
Dragon Clan. When she arrived, Kotal Khan and Rico were already engaged in battle, and Melina set out to kill them both. But one of Rico's most powerful bodyguards was the blood magic powered Scarlet. She taunted Melina with the fact that Rico had abandoned her and turned to her for comfort, and told Scarlet that she was simply his puppet. Using her immense power, Melina rolled towards Scarlet and blew her legs out from under her, leaving her bleeding and crawling away. But Melina stomped her face in the ground and promised that she would torture her. Rico had to be dealt with. He was infused with the blood magic of the daggers, and his strength was multiplying. Against her will, Melina was forced to ally herself temporarily with Kotal and summon Shao Kahn's Warhammer. She used it to bash Rico's face in violently, but Rico's blood magic was sustaining him and regenerated his flesh. He struck back at the group, and they inflicted damage on him that would kill any normal man. But he continued to put himself back together, until Raiden appeared and stopped the entire battle. Raiden had also fallen under Havoc's control, and Havoc revealed himself as the architect behind all the chaos. Havoc took the survivors and prepared them to be converted to his control. He stabbed Rico's body with the Kamidogu daggers alongside the Earthrealm warriors he had also brainwashed. And with the great infusion of power, Rico believed he became a blood god. But Havoc's true plan was to retrieve Shinnok's amulet, and it bore its way painfully into Rico's body, and Havoc ripped the amulet from Rico's head. He now had Shinnok's amulet, and the means to use it for his own purposes. Melina was stabbed in the stomach by Raiden, and fell under Havoc's influence, and so did Johnny Cage, Sonya, and Kotal. Devora, Reptile, and the others participated in a huge battle to stop Havoc, but Melina and her Havoc-controlled allies were powerful. The only way to break the connection was to destroy Havoc. In the end, Hanzo Hisashi appeared and tore Havoc's head from his body, and they returned to normal. Ermac had been captured by Havoc, and Melina freed him. And for the first time, Ermac expressed doubt in Melina's rule. Havoc's entire plot happened right under her nose, and he called her too impetuous to lead. She was furious that he doubted her, but Melina rushed back to the capital of Outworld to take it back from Kotal Khan before he could get back there. She took back rulership of Outworld briefly, but when the truth came out that she was a creation of Shang Tsung's flesh pits, Ermac decided to finally betray her. Leading us to the events, of Mortal Kombat X. Ah, there they are. Three of your fellow counselors, whispering like handmaidens. About what, I wonder? If only you would hear our counsel. As war with Netherrealm looms, I have urged detente with Earthrealm. And I've told you I would sooner die than treat with my father's murderers. You refuse practical solutions to credible threats. You endanger the realm. And sedition does not? Speak your last, before I have your tongue. You are not Shao Kahn's true heir. She is a construct formed in Shang Tsung's flesh pits. I saw this. Your best claim to the throne is moot. How dare you! I succeed Shao Kahn by his decree! Succeed him you have. But Outworld demands new leadership. From you, Arshtek fool. Kill him! <laughs> this one serves Nelina no longer. <laughs> you will defend your Empress. Our creator Shao Kahn is dead. We will serve whom we choose. <laughs> Araka is dead. Your last ally has left you. Take her away. Ermac became one of Kotal Khan's most powerful bodyguards, and Melina had escaped from capture. The Outworld Civil War continued, and Kano, caring only about making a profit, was hired by Melina to attack Kotal. While Melina was waiting with her Charkottans, Rain, and the Adenian Tanya to ambush him. At some point, Melina hired Kano to steal Shinnok's amulet, and Rain encouraged her to use it. But every time she used it, some of her own life force was taken from her, and she was left in pain. Rain was well aware of this and was simply waiting for Melina to be so weak that he could kill her and take the throne. The Tarkatans are in position. We await your order. It is given, dearest Tanya. Stopping a carriage is nothing. Killing an emperor... False emperor! ...requires power. Power you have, Melina, and won't use. It pains me to use it, Rain. 
I need more time. The usurper's excursion came too soon. The rain falls when it may. No matter. If Kano does what I paid him to do. She tasks me for the last time. Melina. Kano was to kill you, miserable snake. Bro, not day. Another Adenian, the supposed half god. Surely Melina suspects your true intentions, son of Argus. As the heir to my father, Shao Kahn, I, Melina, Kanem of Outworld, order your execution! There will be an execution this day. You will atone for your descent, Melina. Your blood will make right. Up the stair path. To the fire's edge. <laughs> Melina was defeated and weakened from using Shinnok's amulet. She escaped with rain and returned to a main camp. In her non-canon Mortal Kombat X ending, Melina defeated a resurrected Shinnok and finally discovered an army that would be loyal to her without fail. Overcome with exertion, Melina collapsed and felt her soul gliding through the ether. She awoke in an incubation chamber. Nearby were countless others, each containing an exact copy of her. Melina found she could read each being's mind and they hers. They quickly realized the benefit of so many fierce warriors sharing one mind. As they plotted revenge on their enemies, the architect of the Melina's awakening laughed quietly. In the canon version of events, Melina was found hiding in her camp by Devora and Cassie Cage, who were working to track down the amulet, although Devora was secretly attempting to retrieve it for Quan Chi and Shinnok. They defeated Rain and Tanya, and Melina was left without protection, an event that would lead to her ultimate downfall. Devora! This one knew you would not stray far from the amulet. You took my throne. Now you wish to steal my means of reclaiming it? Neither was meant for you. Who are you to say? I will take something of yours. Your life! <laughs> Enough of your prattle. Finish me, that I may join my father. You do not deserve death by an emperor's hand. Instead, I give the honor to my worthy first minister. had had enough of Melina and ordered her to be executed, ending her story in the altered Mortal Kombat timeline. During the events of Mortal Kombat 11, after Shinnok was resurrected and defeated, his mother Chronica sought out to erase the current timeline and create a new perfect era of her own creation. She resurrected warriors from times past to fight for her, and although Melina was too chaotic and unpredictable to be used, she was mentioned to Shao Kahn. He learned of her death and was infuriated that Devorah killed his artificial daughter.
You tried merging Earthrealm into Outworld. The Elder Gods intervened, and Raiden killed you. That's when Melina became Khan. After this one killed your daughter, Kotal claimed the throne. You killed Melina? This is true. You will die! Devorah is under my protection, Shao Kahn. In time, Kronika fell to Liu Kang, now Fire God Liu Kang, and he took over the responsibility of time and created a new universe. It's yet to be seen if Melina was still part of Liu Kang's new era, but if she was, perhaps she finally gained the respect that she so desperately sought. The Forgotten Empress. You will remember me, insect. No! Since you made it to the end of this video, I assume you enjoyed it, so why don't you go ahead and smash that like button, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any new content. You can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, links in the description below, and if you'd like to support the channel, you can join my Patreon or become a channel member. This is Fabian, I love you guys, and I'll see you next time.